8. Lament of a soul that with fear goes forth from its tabernacle. But then I, poor creature, saw that another of the globes freed itself from the lineaments of the form it was in and untied all its bonds, and with a groan drew itself out of them, and broke away lamenting from its abode. And it said, I will go forth from my tabernacle. But, miserable and full of grief as I am, where shall I go? I shall go through dreadful and fearsome paths to the judgment where I shall be judged. There I will show the works that I have performed in my tabernacle, and there I will be requited according to my merits. Oh, what great fear, and oh, how much anguish will be there for me! And when it had thus freed itself, there came certain spirits, some of light and some of darkness, who had been its life's companions according to its behavior in its abode, and who waited for its release so that they could lead it away with them. And I heard a living voice saying to them, Let her be led from place to place according to her works. And again I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, The blessed and ineffable trinity showed itself to the world when the Father sent into the world his only begotten, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, so that humans, born so diversely and bound by so many sins, should be brought back by him to the way of truth and thus those who, when released from their ties to the heavy body, carry good and holy works with them might gain the joys of the celestial inheritance. 9. God's knowledge is clouded by no obscurity. That you, O oh human, may grasp this more profoundly and show it more clearly, you see a most great and serene splendor, flaming, as it were, with many eyes, with four corners pointing toward the four parts of the world. This signifies the knowledge of God, great in its mysteries and pure in its manifestations, radiant with the most profound clarity, which extends its all-piercing gaze in fourfold firmness to the four corners of the earth. There this knowledge most clearly foresees those who will be rejected as well as those who will be gathered in this shows the mystery of the celestial majesty, which, as you see, is presented to you in this image of great loftiness and profundity. As it appears another splendor like the dawn, containing in itself a brightness of purple lightning for the knowledge of God also indicates that the only begotten of the Father, taking flesh from the Virgin, hastened to shed his blood in the purity of faith for the salvation of humanity, while in the same knowledge of God the good and the evil are made known, for it is clouded by no obscurity of any kind. But you, O oh human, are saying, what is man to do, when God knows in advance everything man is going to do? And I, O oh human, say this to you. 10. Within the beauty of God's justice no injustice can be found. O oh fool, in the wickedness of your heart you are imitating the one who first refused the way of truth and opposed it with a lie, because he wished to make himself like the supreme goodness. Who can obscure the beginning and the end, who is, was and will remain? And what are you, who are a spark among ashes? And what did you know when you were nothing? But you, with your lamentable beginning miserable end, speak against the thing you do not know and should not know, the indescribable beauty of God's justice in which no suspicion of injustice is found, or has been found, or will be found. O oh fool, for whom do you take the father of wickedness whom you imitate? What does this mean? When pride swells up within you, you want to be raised above the stars and the other creatures and the angels, who fulfill God's precepts in all things. But you shall fall, as the one fell who opposed a lie to the truth. For he loved the lie, and therefore, entangled in death, he fell into the abyss. Therefore, O oh human, pay attention. If you do not contemplate the charity with which God freed you, and if you pay no heed to the number of good things God constantly gives you, and if you do not consider how, when you fall into many sins and love death rather than life, he calls you back from death nonetheless, when you finally remember the scriptures and the doctrines the faithful fathers of antiquity set before you, telling you to avoid evil and do good, then if you say from your inmost heart, I have sinned gravely, wherefore I must return with due penitence to my Father who created me, your Father will receive you lovingly and place you in his bosom and clasp you in sweet embraces. But now you disdain to know that blessedness, which God sets before you, and you refuse to hear or to do God's justice. If it were possible to do, would you not reprimand God's justice as unjust rather than true? For that reason, if you had not been redeemed by the blood of the Son of God, you would be lying lost in perdition. But God's judgment is true and just. Wherefore, O oh human, what advantage will it give you if in my judgment you destroy yourself? In the choir of the angels and in my chosen vineyard resounds the praise of those who laud me and say, 
glory to you, Lord, and, because they are just, they do not contradict my judgment. But what did it profit the devil to oppose me? He, seeing that his brightness was great, tried to exalt himself above all, so that a countless band of proud spirits joined with him all of whom the divine power cast down with him in the zeal of its rectitude. And so also are cast down all who persevere in evil and seek to avert God's justice, laboring to pervert the supreme good into perverse wickedness. So God never established anything unjust, but in the equity of his goodness he ordained all that is right. 11. On idols, and that they must be forsaken. But when the race of people to whom Adam and Eve had narrated how they were made by God and how they had been expelled from paradise passed away, those people arose in the wantonness of vanity who in their unfaithfulness abandoned God, making themselves idols into which the devil entered and mocked them. Others who followed them in perversity worshipped God's creature rather than the Creator himself, and thought things that were not alive could determine their lives. So let all who are still foul with this infidelity forsake their stupidity and be converted in faith to him who broke the devil's snares, laying aside old ignorance and embracing new life, as my servant Ezekiel exhorts, saying. 12. The prophet Ezekiel on this subject. Cast away from you all your transgressions in which you have transgressed, and make for yourselves a new heart and a new spirit, Ezekiel 18 verse 31. Which is to say, O oh, you who want to persevere in rectitude under the sun in whose paths go the blessed sheep, cast out of your heart's knowledge inquiry into those secret things that in the highest wisdom are useless. By them you sought to fly to a vain height but were plunged into a deep pit, in which dwells no honor but only that horrible desire that does not know God. And when you do this, for your salvation go in the way of truth, where you will find in your heart the newness of the sparkling heavens, and where you will have in your spirit the newness of living breath. 13. On the inequality of human seed and the diversity of people made from it. You see also on the earth people carrying milk in earthen vessels and making cheese from it these are the people in the world, both men and women, who have in their bodies human seed, from which the various races of people are procreated. One part is thick, and from it strong cheeses are made for that strong semen, which is useful in well matured and tempered, produces energetic people, to whom brilliant spiritual and bodily gifts are given by their great and noble ancestors, making them flourish in prudence, discretion and usefulness in their works before God and man, and the devil finds no place in them. And one part is thin, and from it weak cheeses are curdled for the semen, imperfectly matured and tempered in a weak season, produces weak people, who are for the most part foolish, languid and useless in their works in the sight of God and the world, not actively seeking God but also one part is mixed with corruption, and from it bitter cheeses are formed for that semen is basely emitted in weakness and confusion and mixed uselessly, and it produces misshapen people, who often have bitterness, adversity and oppression of heart and are thus unable to raise their minds to higher things. Many of them nonetheless become useful though they suffer many tempests and troubles in their hearts and in their actions, they come out victors. For if they were left in peace and quiet, they would become languid and useless, and therefore God forces them and leads them to the path of salvation, as it is written. 14. Words of Moses on this subject. I will kill, and I will make live I will strike, and I will heal and there is none who can deliver out of my hand, Deuteronomy 32 verse 39. Which is to say, I who am, having neither beginning nor end, slay in their deeds wicked people who, steeped in vice by the devil's filth, are deceived by the diabolic pits into sowing unhappy births. Oh! How crafty is the bite of the viper, which so poisons them that death tries to enter into them. Therefore I deprive them of prosperity in this world, where they are slain by many calamities that they cannot overcome but which by just judgment are always with them. But I, who am thrown down by no darkness, also cause these people to live wonderfully elsewhere, when I draw the spirit that lives in them upward from the earth so that it may not perish within them. I also afflict with wounds of weakness in their life's labor those who try in their pride of mind to rise to an absurd height, thinking that no one can cast them down, but I who am present. Everywhere also sometimes raise them to true health, so that they will not be destroyed by vanity amid deceitful dangers. And in all these things there is no human or other creature who can subvert these works of mine by any cunning or fierceness of his for there is no one who can resist my will and justice. 15. Why stunted and deformed infants are born. 
And often, as you see, when male and female unite in forgetfulness of me and in the mockery of the devil, those who are born are found to be stunted so that their parents, who transgressed my precepts, may feel anguish at having these children and so return to me in penitence. Often also I let these strange births take place among people for my glory and that of my saints, so that when those who are thus deformed are restored to health by the help of my elect, my name may be more ardently glorified among people. But those who bind themselves by an agreement to seek the glory of virginity ascend like the dawn to the secret places of heaven, since for the sake of my son's love they deprive themselves of the delights of the body. 16. An infant is vivified in the womb and confirmed by a soul on leaving it. And you see the image of a woman who has a perfect human form in her womb. This means that after a woman has conceived by human semen, an infant with all its members whole is formed in the secret chamber of her womb. And behold, by the secret design of the supernal creator that form moves with vital motion for, by God's secret and hidden command and will, fitly and rightly at the divinely appointed time the infant in the maternal womb receives a spirit, and shows by the movements of its body that it lives, just as the earth opens and brings forth the flowers of its use when the dew falls on it. So that a fiery globe which has no human lineaments possesses a heart of that form that is, the soul, burning with a fire of profound knowledge, which discerns whatever is within the circle of its understanding, and, without the form of human members, since it is not corporeal or transitory like a human body, gives strength to the heart and rules the whole body as its foundation, as the firmament of heaven contains the lower regions and touches the higher. And it also touches the person's brain for in its powers it knows not only earthly but also heavenly things, since it wisely knows God and it spreads itself through all the person's members for it gives vitality to the marrow and veins and members of the whole body, as the tree from its root gives sap and greenness to all the branches. But then this human form, in this way vivified, comes forth from the woman's womb, and changes its color according to the movement the globe makes in that form which is to say that after the person has received the vital spirit in the maternal womb and is born and begins his actions, his merits will be according to the works his soul does with the body, for he will put on brightness from the good ones and darkness from the evil ones. 17. How the soul shows its powers according to the powers of the body. The soul now shows its powers according to the powers of the body, so that in a person's infancy it produces simplicity, in his youth strength, and in adulthood, when all the person's veins are full, it shows its strongest powers in wisdom as the tree in its first shoots is tender and then shows that it can bear fruit, and finally, in its full utility, bears it. But then in human old age, when the marrow and veins start to incline to weakness, the soul's powers are gentler, as if from a weariness at human knowledge as when winter approaches the sap of the tree diminishes in the branches and the leaves, and the tree in its old age begins to bend. 18. A person has three paths within himself. But a person has within himself three paths. What are they? The soul, the body and the senses and all human life is led in these. How? The soul vivifies the body and conveys the breath of life to the senses the body draws the soul to itself and opens the senses and the senses touch the soul and draw the body. For the soul gives life to the body as fire gives light to darkness, with two principal powers like two arms, intellect and will the soul has arms not so as to move itself, but so as to show itself in these powers as the sun shows itself by its brilliance. Therefore, O human, who are not just a bundle of marrow, Pay attention to scriptural knowledge. 19. On the intellect. The intellect is joined to the soul like an arm to the body. For as the arm, joined to the hand with its fingers, branches out from the body, so the intellect, working with the other powers of the soul, by which it understands human actions, most certainly proceeds from the soul. For before all the other powers of the soul it understands whatever is in human works, whether good or evil, so that through it, as through a teacher, everything is understood for it sifts things as wheat is purified of any foreign matter, inquiring whether they are useful or useless, lovable or hateful, pertinent to life or death. Thus, as food without salt is tasteless, the other powers of the soul without intellect are insipid and undiscerning. But the intellect is also to the soul as the shoulder is to the body, the very core of the other powers of the soul as the bodily shoulder is strong so it understands the divinity and the humanity in God. Which is the joint of the arm, and it has true faith in its work, 
which is the joint of the hand, with which it chooses among the various works wisely as if with fingers. But it does not work in the same way as the other powers of the soul. What does this mean? 20. On the will. The will activates the work, and the mind receives it, and the reason produces it. But the intellect understands the work, knowing good and evil, just as the angels, who have intellect, love good and despise evil. And where the heart is in the body, there the intellect is in the soul, exercising its power in that part of the soul as the will does in another part. How? Because the will has great power in the soul. How? The soul stands in a corner of the house, that is, by the prop of the heart, like a man who stands in a corner of his house, so that looking through the whole house he may command all its contents, lifting his right arm to point out what is useful in the house and turning to the east. Thus the soul should do, looking along the streets of the body toward the rising sun. Thus it puts its will, like a right arm, as the support of the veins and marrow and the movement of the whole body for the will does every work, whether it be good or bad. 21. Analogy of Fire and Bread For the will is like a fire, baking each deed as if in a furnace. Bread is baked so that people may be nourished by it and be able to live. So too the will is the strength of the whole work, for it starts by kneading it and when it is firm adds the yeast and pounds it severely and, thus preparing the work in contemplation as if it were bread, it bakes it in perfection by the full action of its ardor, and so makes a greater food for humans in the work they do than in the bread they eat. A person stops eating from time to time, but the work of his will goes on in him till his soul leaves his body. And in whatever differing circumstances the work is performed, whether in infancy, youth, adulthood or bent old age, it always progresses in the will and in the will comes to perfection. 22. How in the will's tabernacle all powers are activated and come together. But the will has in the human breast a tabernacle, the mind, upon which the intellect and that same will and a sort of force of the soul all breathe in strength. And all these are activated and come together in the same tabernacle. How? If anger arises, gall is produced and brings the anger to its height by filling the tabernacle with smoke. If wicked delight rises up, the flame of lust touches its structure, and so the wantonness that pertains to that sin is elevated and in that tabernacle united with it. But there is another, lovely kind of joy, which is kindled in that tabernacle by the Holy Spirit, and the rejoicing soul receives it faithfully and perfects good works in the desire of heaven. And there is a kind of sadness that engenders in the tabernacle, out of those humors that surround the gall, the sloth which produces disdain, obduracy and stubbornness in people and depresses the soul, unless the grace of God comes quickly to rescue it. But since in that tabernacle there occur contrary conditions, it is often disturbed by hatred and other deadly emotions, which kill the soul and try to lay it waste in perdition. But when the will wills, it can move the implements in the tabernacle and in its burning ardor dispose of them, whether they are good or evil. But if these implements please the will, it bakes its food there and offers it to people to enjoy. So in that tabernacle a great throng of good and evil things arises, like an army gathered in some place of assembly when the commander of an army arrives, if the army pleases him he accepts it, but if it displeases him he orders it to disband. The will does the same. How? If good or evil arises in the breast, the will either carries it out or ignores it.